<laughs> How are you, Christina? I need to pop over to ease my anxiety over nice. that last game we all played. <laughs> wow. Your I team know. won. I know. I know. Very I know. I know. I know. This kitchen's well, only for winners. Like, <laughs> in, in shock oh, right oh, now. Everybody's tra traumatized. We are. We're all traumatized. That's but what but I you know what? Now. Don't worry because our tummies are going to be filled with such goodness and lusciousness because mm. nothing goes better than what you eat than a steak, anything, than a popover. And showing us how to make a must have item from his popular steakhouse restaurant, the Arthur J. is Chef David Lefebvre. Lefebvre. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I have to mention though, he's a Michelin chef, everyone, so let's hear, you know. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yep. It's a big mm -hmm. deal. Big deal. What? Congratulations on that show. Thanks. Such a, such a destination for everybody to be like, that's what I want to reach for. I want to yeah. arrive at that stat. Where did it start for you in the kitchen? What was the first dish you made? Uh, you cooked? The first dish that I actually learned to cook was with my mother. I learned she taught me how to make a chowder that she used to make. And Chowder. which is kind of unique because we grew up in the Midwest, but my mother was from the East Coast. So I remember her making this really great, rich, luscious chowder. And I think I was in fifth or sixth grade. And I just remember asking, you know, how do you make that? And that's um, how it started. That's how it started. I loved eating and I was tired of waiting for people to cook for me. That's <laughs> really why. Why are you tired of yeah. waiting? But is, yeah. it, but is, Bring it out. is it like there uh, with the chowder, it seems complicated. Like you have to yeah. learn different things. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you really oh, want to learn oh, how to cook, oh, if you really want to oh, learn how to learn a bunch of different techniques, oh, learning how to make soup is actually a great way to do that because you have to learn how to make a stock. You'd have to learn how to sweat oh, vegetables. Oh, you need to learn how to braise sweat meat. Vegetables. Yeah, that's slightly you know, sauté. Yeah, it's right. awkward. Right, <laughs> but it's a it's a technical oh, term. Interestingly, technical my term. first comedy album was called Rich Luscious yeah. Chowder. So nice, weird. nice, that's cool. Strange. But if you learn how to make a soup, you learn how to sauté, you learn how to braise, you learn how to make stocks, you learn a bunch of different cooking techniques in just making a soup. So it's actually a really okay. good way well, to cook. Well, a lot of yeah. people are intimidated or think popovers are hard to make, but mm -hmm. they're actually not, but there is a technique oh that you do need. Yeah, there is. They're not hard to eat, I'm saying that. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so good. Good, good, why, good. Why are right. Popovers are so popular, yet, mm. you know, I'm a food I, I'm, A lot of places don't ever even consider yeah. making them at restaurants because it's a kind of a lengthy process and they're mm. temperamental. But once you really learn the oven and right. you learn the technique, they're really, really simple. Great, to let's make. get okay. started. So the first thing you want to do when you when you make a popover Ooh. is you want to make sure that you have a pan, the popover pans that are hot in the oven. So we already put them in the oven. Look at this, you right? guys. Watch this. Look at this. So these Watch. are the popover pans. Oh, a popover pan. Oh, right. <laughs> Never mind. We'll right. To you in a so this is what popover a popover mold looks like. Okay. So we preheat them and get them really, really hot. They have to be hot. That's Why? one of the special things. Why? Because there's no leavener in, in the ingredients besides oh. the liquid. So it's the heat creating steam with the liquid that actually makes, makes them rise and pop. It was in there at what temperature for how long? Four, oh. It was just from 425 until it's hot. It takes about 15 minutes for okay. them to get hot right. enough, okay? I, I've heard you can use a muffin tin. Is that true you can. or false? You can use a muffin tin, but it won't, um, up as high it won't pop as high as these will, though, yeah. yeah. So, so have you ever had a popover be a flop over then? Uh, yeah, you can have a flop over pop <laughs> over. <laughs> Only if you can say that five or six times fast. Flop over pop over. Flop over pop over. not hot enough. I've been on a diet for the last two months. The only time I can eat carbs is on camera, so I'm like, wait. So, have more for you. Now we've got hot, a hot pan here. So you're going to take, we've got milk, we've got eggs, and we've got together. egg whites. Put it all in there together. There you go. Nice. Eggs. Unabashedly, I like it. Egg, yep. yeah. Those are whole eggs. Those are egg whites. Couple extra egg whites. And then just add the salt in there. All right. Perfect. And then you can just all whisk. Yeah, just add it all in there. Yep. Okay. And then whisk that together. Okay, so we're going to get the liquids all homogenous, nicely mixed oh. together. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna add the flour to it. A lot of times you'll see people take flour and add the liquid to it and make a well. Yeah. This time we're actually gonna do it in reverse. We don't wanna work the flour a lot, okay? You don't wanna work the flour a lot and don't wanna get too glutinous, otherwise it'll be really rubbery, okay? Uh -huh. All right, so I'm gonna add this to it nice and lightly while you stir, okay? There stir you go. Or whisk? Yeah, both. All right. Okay, and you're gonna wanna just mix it until you see pea size, um, pea size granules of flour in there, okay? So just about this side. You don't have to mix it until it's totally smooth, right? The less right, you mix it, actually, lumpy. usually the better. Yep. Right, Keep this, going on that. Yep. All right. I need to hurry up. Okay. So the key, th one of the key things with the batter is you want to make sure that you let the batter sit at least one hour before you use oh, it in the popover. Right. Okay. So a lot of people will make it and they'll pour it in there. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Outside. <laughs> All right. Good shooting, Tex. All right. Nice. Yeah. It's easy. That is never this okay? happens. What happens? A little that, bit more here. Yeah, that's just on the edges. So the flour will absorb the liquid more. 
okay. without actually working the, the flour. Did you have every to time that you work, obvious question. Every time you whisk oh flour, God. you're working the gluten in the flour. It'll get thicker and thicker and firmer and firmer, and when you cook, it'll get rubberier. Just let it do so you want to just let it absorb. That? That's perfect. That's this great. That's perfect. So okay. you can just, now we have one that we already made ahead of time. Right. Okay. So you can get rid of that, all right? Oh. Boom! Okay. Look Through the that. magic of television, oh, we have some batter. All right, so you're going to pour batter into these just about halfway into each one of those. Halfway. Yep. Perfect. Halfway. Well, that's halfway. good. Yeah, that's good. good. A little, a little less than that. No, no, don't listen to that guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. You're doing great. It's kind of like a high kick. But I know what to do with hecklers. I know what to so do with hecklers. Okay. Yep, exactly. It's going into hot oil, right? Yeah, into so that's pan. going into a hot pan, right, okay. exactly. And what will happen is it'll start to form around the edges, and that heat will react with the liquid in the, in the, in the, uh, in the batter, and that air Air will happen. That steam will actually make the the, the popover right. start to rise. You're like okay? a chef mixed with Mr. Wizard. You that's know, right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I'm going to take oh. that. I'm going to pop that in the oven. Okay. And we're going to put that in there for the 45 <laughs> minutes. Pop. A lot of popping going. Okay, on. look at this. Watch. About 45 Watch. minutes to an hour. Watch. 45 minutes. Oh, <gasps> oh my God. There we go. I mean, oh, oh, time time. Like time oh my gosh. That is like a house. That's look at the size of that. So these things. They pop up, they create this nice crispy shell, little Emmental cheese at the end, and then you can just take them. Look at this, here, I'll give you. Oh, how did you put the cheese at the end? Oh, no. Can I ask this a question one. though? This oh, many one. times, I don't know if you've got. Oh, no, here you go, oh. you get to eat it. Oh, oh I do? There, here you go, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh -huh. um, when, when you make the, here, here's an, I'll give <laughs> you a little bit. I want to get some of that cheese. Nice to eat. All right. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was oil, that was canola oil spray. I'm oh interested. Okay. I need to ask you, yeah. I need to ask you though, okay. when you make these, a lot of times when you take them out of the, oh. Okay. Yeah, look at that, see, they're nice and steamy. Right, they're hollow, right, they just have that beautiful, <gasps> look at that get center. Them not to collapse, that's the problem. Oh, okay, so that's a great out. question. A Most nice people cook them once they pop up. <gasps> they take them out and then it'll, they'll fall. Right, yeah. So you have to leave them in, once they pop up, you have to leave them in the oven for about another 10 to 15 minutes so that outer shell will get nice and firm. And so they'll stay puffed like that and they'll mm. stay firm.